We are in the Winelands, Stellenbosch to be exact. And joining us right here on Marawa TV is Ryan Moon. I like the headlines that say there's a new moon on the horizon. That was like one of the quirky headlines everyone wrote. But Ryan Moon, thank you so much for joining us on Marawa TV. You were clubless after leaving Kaiser Chiefs after a three-year contract wasn't renewed. First of all, how did you deal with that? Well, actually, it wasn't um, me just leaving. It was a contract that was put in place. Um, there was a contract that was offered to me and stuff, and uh, I think um, circumstances are different, things changed, but um, you know, I'm a firm believer everything happens for a reason, I serve a living God. Um, so yeah, like I said, it wasn't just for me to say, well, look, we, we're releasing you and stuff like that. There was, there was a contract, there was stuff that was, we were negotiating and stuff. Um, so um, I left and uh, I don't leave with any regrets. I'm happy, I'm excited for my, what's, what lies ahead of me. I'm a young man who's eager to learn, eager to to express myself. Expressing himself, indeed. Uh, let's just rewind back a few years back. So you were at Maritzburg College, captain the soccer team, uh, and then you joined Maritzburg where Bryce Moon, which is his brother also, Bafana former Bafana Bafana defender, he went to Ajax Cape and didn't play for Maritzburg at that moment. He then went to Ajax and then Panathinaikos after that. But also your dad played for Maritzburg, United. Patrick, how was that? Three, three in the family playing for the same club. It's it's great, you know. I think for me as a young man growing up, obviously I'd watch Bryce a lot. I didn't I didn't get to watch my dad much, but he talks like he talks like he was uh, Messi or Ronaldo. He, some people of his uh, some of his uh, his um, friends back it up. But it was it, like I said, it was really great to to know that you have big shoes to fill. It was exciting for me, and I never ever looked at it as pressure. I mean, a lot of people would come up to me at interviews and say, "How do you deal with the pressure?" For me, it was exciting. I had people that I could look up to. I had people that I wanted wanted to aspire to be like. Um, Bryce is still my hero. I want to accomplish the things he's accomplished. So, like I say, for me it was never about pressure. It was for me saying, "Look, Bryce has achieved this. My dad's achieved this. Wow, I'm, I'm signed for Maritzburg United as well." And um, it's great to be a part of, of of the legacy that they've that they've uh, laid down. Now, Ryan also has three other brothers, including Bryce uh, Moon. You two other brothers, they don't play soccer. No, they don't. Well, Dalry was a rugby player. Uh, Stefan was very good in hockey and swimming. SA. Uh, Dalry was national, well not national team, he was uh, provincial for rugby. So we come from a very sporty background. I mean, I have to mention my mum as well. She gets a bit, she gets a bit touched when I don't mention it because it's always my dad who was a footballer. So I'll mention it now. She was also a good sprinter and a hockey player. <laughs> well, what's your mum's name? Geraldine. Geraldine Moon. Mrs. Moon. Mrs. G. Moon. There we go. All right. So Ryan, you also, after leaving Chiefs, you then went to have a stint in Europe. You went to Edinburgh in Scotland, scored one goal in three appearances in, in, in friendlies, um, and then you just didn't crack the nod there. It was, it was a bit tricky because the agent that did, didn't inform uh, me and my representative that uh, I think three days before I arrived, they had signed two strikers. They had signed Doija and Camberry. So from the get-go, it was a bit difficult. Like I said, I think they had obviously identified their players that had already signed. And I think before that, there was a couple of weeks that my work permit, my work, uh, I mean, my visa couldn't come. So I had to wait about, I think it was three weeks before it came. So a lot could have happened if I had been there. But like I say, I arrived there, they had signed the two strikers. I, I played a couple of friends, I did really well, I scored. The coach was really impressed. I mean, he spoke with me afterwards. He said, look, just the timing was a bit off. So um, yeah, from there I went on to, I nearly signed it at France as well. But again, with, uh, I was supposed to sign with Bezier. But I couldn't get my work visa in time as well. It was going to take about three and a half to four weeks to get my work visa. And the coach wasn't happy about that because Obviously, the season would have been in full swing by then. They would have had eight games. So I think it was small little, small little things that were stopping me. But like I said, everything happens for a reason. I'm excited to be here. And um, I still have ambitions of obviously wanting to go back. So for me now, at my age, it's about enjoying football and just having fun. Talking about here, yes, yeah, Stellenbosch FC. Um, you then joined Stellenbosch. It was quite a, a big unveiling. Moon joined Stellenbosch, new club from NFD to top flight football. Um, what was the decision factor to join Stellenbosch? I had a lot of offers in the PSL even before I left for, for Europe. Um, even when I came back, I had a couple of offers from a few big, few big teams. But I think for me at the moment, I can't, I can't afford to come and just sit on the bench and, and add a number. I think if, if I had been money driven, I could have been happy to go and sit on the bench and earn a, a decent salary. But I want to enjoy my football, I want to play football. And I looked at Stellenbosch, I think they got a really good coach in Coach Steve and uh, Coach Wes. They got a nice, um, a nice, nice facilities. I think I don't think you've seen, have you seen the gym, SAS. I think everybody knows SAS is, is, is recognized worldwide. 
So I, I saw myself improving as a player, I saw myself improving, improving as an individual on and off the field because it's important in football. You know, I think as footballers, especially in the modern era, it's all about men mentality. You know, you've got to have a right frame of mind. And I think me as an individual, I thought that, look, I, th I can see myself improving here, I can see myself playing, I can see myself scoring. And uh, also, I think they, they saw me with the, the vision that they have as a club. They're a very family orientated club and um, it's, it's, it's good to be a part of. You got quite a sweet left foot on you. You scored on debut for Bafana Bafana. That was a great. I've seen the video. Beat the eight, beat the six. Well, the six, then the the, the defender, left footer, keeper's right. That was a brilliant goal. It was. I think it, it, you're only a, a hand for your people that have scored on on debut for Bafana Bafana. It is, and I'm, it's a memory that I always cherish for the rest of my life. It was really great to be. A, to, to score and believe it or not actually Bryce also scored his first goal for Botswana as well. when I was when we were driving to to the stadium in in uh, Botswana I was reading the the, the pamphlets that they obviously they give us and I saw Bryce Moon I said wow okay let's see if I can do it too and look I went on and I did it as well so it's good you're turning 23 next month in September you are a Virgo 2022 is around the corner it's the World Cup what is Ryan Moon's ambitions when it comes to the national team I'd definitely like to get back into the national team. Um, yeah, How hungry are you, man? I'm very hungry to get back into the national team, definitely. And I think, like I say, with more game time, with more, um, with the coach having faith and belief in me, obviously I get some goals and uh, working hard for the team as well. I think that's the main thing is, is, is getting a good foundation for Stellenbosch. You know, I think I have to put my personal ambitions aside. I have to focus on the, the job at hand in Stellenbosch. I think. For me, if the club can start doing well, getting goals, getting good performances and winning, I think that for me is, is the most important thing. And everything else will come, the goals will come, the performances will come. I think when you when you don't focus on, on the money, we don't focus on on you know on, on other things that you cannot control in your life, then you, you tend to go offwards, you know. So I think the main thing is focusing on what I can control, my emotions, the way I, I play, the way I support the team and, and, and help them. You mentioned it now twice, the money aspect. The controllables versus the uncontrollables. It seems that money is not an issue for you right now, but playing. I think money is a big problem, not only in football, I think in life, to be honest. Um, I think we're so focused on get your money on, get your money on, you have to make money. I think when you're doing well, it comes. And that's the most important thing, I think, when you're doing well, when you're successful. And it, look, it might come when I'm 23, it might come when I'm 40 or 50, but for now it's about focusing on yourself, improving yourself as an individual, because People that have millions aren't happy, you know, and I think that's one thing that my family always instilled in me, you know, is happiness comes first, family comes first, you know, having those responsibilities. So, like I say, enjoying myself, uh, enjoying football, enjoying the environment and everything else will come. All those things will follow the, the money, the endorsements, whatever it has. But for now, it's just about having fun, enjoying it and working hard because you're not just going to get it. It's not just going to be handed to you. So you've got to work hard and we'll come. It is Ryan Moon right with us here on Marawa TV. Ryan, you, you're talking about family, you're talking about your football career where you want to be successful and really motivate yourself to be successful. If you look at your career right now, where it's standing, and when you started off at Maritzburg College, then go to Maritzburg United, and then go to Chiefs national team, and now Stellenbosch, how would you rate your success at the moment? I think pretty successful, to be honest. I think as a 23-year-old, which is not young to be honest, because overseas there's people that are playing at a at a young age, 18, 19, and are performing. But I think right now at the moment, I think I think a little bit successful. I think I've represented my my, my country. I've scored, I've scored in the PSL. I've played for the big one of the biggest teams in the country. Um, so I think for now, I think it's 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 good. I think now I think my, I need to be more ambitious in terms of individual stuff. Um, obviously, pushing on to one of the top goal scorer in the league, wanting to be. At the is that your ambition this, this season? Definitely, definitely my ambition to be top goal scorer this season. Uh, I think with more game time, it's possible. How many goals are we going to see you bang in for Stellenbosch? Um, about 20, I'd like. 20? I'd like, I'd like 20, but you know, always say you got to aim big and then and then see what happens. You know, if, if you say you want 10 and you're only going to get 5, if you say you want 15, you, so aim as high as you can. You know, the sky's the limit, so we'll see. Sky's the limit, the moon is on the horizon, the moon is up in the air and moon is in Stellenbosch. Let's look at Ryan Moon right now, or football, and let's go to the EPL. Your Liverpool supporter, the same as Coach Steve. Big, big Liverpool fan. I love them, and uh, my entire family is actually United fans. So it's pretty good at the moment. We're doing well, and they're doing bad. So 
so it's crystal clear that you're the only Liverpool supporter. Only Liverpool supporter. Yeah, see what I did there? They're not happy after the weekend's result. What's the music you're listening to at the moment? If you go into your car right now, what's the music you're listening to on your phone? So it depends. It depends. I think what day it is, how, what mood I'm in. I like to listen right, to today it. It's, today it's a nice day. It's cloudy. Today it's nice and relaxing. So I like my old R&B. I like my kids' sweet. I like my uh, boys to men, especially when it's cold. You know, love music. I, I enjoy that. And uh, obviously, if uh, you know, before games or on the weekends, I enjoy my hill songs. I really do. And then obviously, I like all types of music, you know, from Drake to to um, uh, Burner Boy, whatever it is. I asked uh, Morgan to give me a line of Drake, and he was like, because he's a Drake singer, well, supporter. Uh, so let's say a Boys to Men song. Let's give us a, let's get a line quickly. Uh, Boys to Men song. Um, I have one, but. Uh, <laughs> Okay, so it's, um, I'll make love to you, yeah. love you want me to. Let's, let, let's hear the line, the <laughs> chorus, let's go. <laughs> uh, the chorus goes like that, I'll, I'll make love to you. Uh, like no, you've you got to sing it, you've got to sing it. I'm a, I'm a bad, I'm a uh, bad Let's hear singer. it, I'm, I'm, I'm just so bad, so let's hear it. I'm really a bad singer. At, least, at least one line. Um, I'll make love to you, <laughs> like you want me to. So that, that's one line I give you. So I'm who are you thinking of when you sing that? Um, somebody, 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 somebody special. Somebody special. <laughs> somebody special. <laughs> All right. So hill songs before game, and that and that gets you going. Are you very religious? I'm very religious. I come from a family that instilled um, the Lord in within me, and I'm grateful for that. You know, I think had I not had the Lord with me in the past few months, I would, it's so easy for me to be to have gone astray. You know, especially with so much going on, so much being in the media. So I think it's it's really great. And like I always say, I serve a living God, and uh, you know, he has a plan for my life and um, I think all the heel songs talk about it, you know, like be still, you know, know that I'm God and, uh, you know, even when, if I'm feeling down, you know, Jesus, I need you, you know, so a lot of those songs get to me and get me going. How has Ryan Moon at the moment, uh, there's been lots of talk, you, you talk about the media, writing that, yes, they're signing a player with European experience, oh, he just went for an experience. Mm -hmm. How do you deal with media criticism and comments being made or headlines being written when they criticize you? I think it's been good to, I think that's when it comes in having a brother who's played in Champions League, I think Bryce, you know, it's, it's good to know. I think one thing he always says, you know, today they love you, tomorrow they hate you. You know, you got to remember how, how you got to, you got to, how can I say it? Know that the people around you care about you and love you and, uh, you know, you don't have to prove any, anything to anybody but yourself. You know, that's it. You know that if you know you're a great player, you're a great player. You don't need the media to write 50 pages about it to say you're a great player. It starts with within, you know, within having the self-belief that I am good, you know, and, and that's what it is. Like I say, I can score a hat trick to I can score a hat trick on Wednesday and miss a penalty next week, and they say from zero to zero. So it comes with the territory. You just got to deal with it. So you're talking about 20 goals, top goal scorer in the PSL this season, and already you preempted a hat trick against Wits. <laughs> yeah, no, obviously I just if if it's if, it, if it's, it's definitely possible. So, uh, but we can see. For me, at the moment, it's just. Getting Stellenbosch's first win and getting them their first goal, and that's the most important thing now. Not the hat tricks, not, any, not the goals, it's about getting them the first win and first goal. So, ambition to play in Europe one day, to play again for Bafana Bafana, and the World Cup coming up in 2022. Top goal scorer for, uh, in the season this year, uh, this season. If Ryan Moon takes positiveness from a sports person besides your brother, who would that be? Who inspires you? Um, I think Tiger Woods. Definitely, I'm a big golf fan. I think his ability to bounce back um, after being out for so long. I think there were so many people say he's never going to play golf again. He's never going to be able to swing a club. I think he himself at one time doubted himself. That yeah, he had a gonna, massive back injury. He had a mess. He, he had a spine. He had a spine operation. So, if someone of that caliber can also be able to doubt himself but come back, you know, imagine he's mental state you know having not played for so long having people talk bad about you and you've achieved so much i think he'll go down as one of, he can't at the moment go down as the greatest golfer because he hasn't won 18 majors but if you look at the way he's played and stuff obviously and the things he's achieved is is, is unbelievable so yeah like i said <clears throat> for him to to go through so much and come back at the masters and and, and go about it it's, you know for me it, it gives me motivation that you know and i mean our, our sense of media compared to what he was getting, 
this chalk and cheese because he was probably getting hammered left, right and centre. And he came back and he won. So for me, that's a, it's a good sign for me that, you know, no matter what. And look at his age as well. Not so many people would have, would have, you know, put him down, but he came back. All right, as we come to the end of our conversation with Ryan Moon, if Ryan Moon, one word answers, was not a soccer player, he would be? A lawyer. My cheat meal would be? Uh, Burger King. Favourite colour? Blue. If I could play for any team internationally, it would be? Liverpool. Liverpool. All right, thank you so much for joining us right here on Marawa TV, Thanks Ryan Moon. Uh, all the best for the season coming up. And as you said, a hat-trick against Vitz and 20 goals in the season as he finishes up, in his mind, the top goal scorer in the APSA Premiership for the 2019-2020 season. From all of us at Marawa TV, thank you so much, Ryan Moon. Thank and thank you so much for joining us. No, thanks for having me. We continue our conversation right here at Stellenbosch and with us is the captain, Jared Marul. Jared, thank you for joining us right here on Marawa TV. It's a pleasure being here, Gosh, man. You've now been three seasons with Stellenbosch. First time around, second on the log, then it was mid-table and now winning the promotion to the PSL. How has that been, captain? No, it's been really great being the captain for Stellenbosch FC. It was a privilege, actually, and being a local Catonian taking a national uh, first division team to the PSR, it's, it's everyone's dream actually, so it's been great being here. How nervous was it that last two games of the season? Because midway through the season, you guys were struggling, you went through a patch where results weren't going your way and all of a sudden you just hit. You know, at the beginning of the season we actually got the points that we needed, so we, we could at least um, lose a game or two there, so that that actually actually helped us um, gain the points, and so we actually gave ourselves time and, sp and time and space just to reach that. It's always tough. It's tough to, to, to drop points. And how will you be motivating the team as you're seeking the first win and then gaining momentum in top flight football? We just have to take the momentum from the last few games that we played. So. We just have to score that first goal. Once we get that first goal, the confidence of the attacking players will be there. And going from the defence to attack, it will just bring us more togetherness. And, you know, just that first goal we need is just to score that first goal. So we need to score it. Who's the joker in the team at the moment? I won't lie, I think it's me. Are you the joker? <laughs> no, we have a few. We have a few characters in the team. So there is a few different personalities we have couple of international guys also here, so it's different type of characters and you know that different backgrounds, cultures, religions, so there's a lot of guys that have a joke or two, but there is some, someone, but I don't know actually at the moment because we're still a new team and there's also a new place, so we need to just find that, that one person and always make that joke, you know. So he is the captain, he is the joker <laughs> of the team, the character in the team. Uh, Jared, looking forward to the big games. You come from the NFD, you've played there three seasons with Stellenbosch. Let's look at those big games that you're still facing. The Alunda Pirates, the Sundowns, the Super Sports, the Kaiser Chiefs. How is the team going to keep themselves together? You know, playing, How are you going to lead the team? Playing against those teams, it's, it's a mental thing. So the guys have to be mentally strong. If they're not mentally strong, then it's going to be tough for them on the, on the field. The supporters, Everyone around, the, it's, it's going to be the atmosphere, so they have to keep themselves levelated, they have to be calm and not get too excited, but they just have to be a little bit calm and think about the game plan, think about going forward and, you know, it's, the, the challenges around there will be challenging, but they just have to be levelated and just follow the game plan and from there on to just flow, you know. As the captain, what is your your dream for the season for Stellenbosch FC in top flight football? My dream is to be successful this season, so... How would you gauge that success? By not getting relegated, by reaching top eight. That is our, our goal, reaching top eight. And, you know, being a, a good, successful team and a brand also. You know, Stellenbosch is a brand. So we have to show that, showcase it to the people that we are a good team, that we didn't get promotion for just adding numbers here in the PSL, we have to compete and we have to perform to the best of your ability. So I think that is one of the things that we have to work on. 
Obviously, the relationship is very important between captain, players and management. Yeah. How do you deal with that? How, how do you make sure that it's smooth all the time? No, the, um, the coach, has, he came in when we had the playoffs. I had to remember that was the first season of Stellenbosch. We had the playoffs, so he came in. At, he added some value to the team. He added like knowledge, experience of winning, winning the promotion with tax to the PSL. So he added some value and the relationship between us has always been good. He, he likes to communicate to the players. He's not afraid to communicate to the players and he's not afraid to let the, communi um, the players communicate with him. So he's an open-minded coach. And with that, being at the at the club is actually good for player and management, so the relationship there is actually good. Lastly, you spoke about your dream as a player for the club and we'd like to see Stellenbosch going. What is your dream as a player? My dream as a player is to one day just take this team, Stellenbosch FC, and make it the successful team in the PSL, Africa, and even in the world also. So, Taking this team, making it a good brand and showcasing this team that, you know, we, in the past it's been rugby community, but now we want to take this soccer team to be a, like, to make it a soccer community. So people have been longing for soccer in Stellenbosch and you can see the passion in the people when they come support us. The supporters, they, they are hungry for success. So. Being a successful team in Stellenbosch, even in, in South Africa, it's, it's, I can, ex, I can, I can explain now, it's, it will be rewarding for the people in Stellenbosch because there's, so, um, there's been so many talent, raw talent in Stellenbosch, you know, the late Reggie Janches, he's been uh, a high icon in, in Stellenbosch football. There's been a lot of ex-players that's been from Stellenbosch but didn't have that opportunity to showcase themselves in the professional football career. So I think Stellenbosch FC is that foundation now for the future. And you know, being, being a, a local boy from Blue Downs, Tuscany Glen, um, I've been, my, my career has been like I've been, I spent my career like eight years in the NFD. I, I, I didn't give up. I told myself, I want to take an NFD team to the PSL. And once I, <laughs> once I take that NFD team to the PSL, I want to make that team a successful team in the PSL. And you know, if you work hard, you're persistent, and you don't give up, your dream will, your dream will be there. So. I uh, ask my message to the people and the uh, people of Stellenbosch that do not give up on the team of Stellenbosch, do not give up on the boys. Things will fall into place at the end of the time. So, yeah, so they must just keep on believing in us and we will be successful. And that is Jared Marill, the captain of Stellenbosch FC. Big dreams. He wants to make Stellenbosch a brand. A brand will be recognized in South Africa, in the PSL, in top flight football, and also in Africa and perhaps internationally. Thank you so much for joining us right here on Madawa TV. He's the captain and, as you said, character and also perhaps the joker of the team. Reporting for Madawa TV right here from Stellenbosch. Until next time, goodbye.